So when talking about systems of equations and how to solve them, and we showed you the method of graphing. So you can solve it by graphing. The problem with graphing is it's really hard to get you know, accurate reads off the graph. And sometimes we assume the answer is an integer when maybe it's not, in fact, an integer. Uh, so we have other methods, two other methods, to solve a system of equations. And so the one we're going to talk about here is called substitution. And the idea is if you have a system of equations, I'm just going to make one up, y equals x plus 3. And then the other equation says something like, I don't know, 2x plus 5y equals 7. And I'm just making up numbers here. I'm not going to do the problem, actually. I'm just showing you the idea. But you have two equations here. Well, because this top equation has y equaling something, then you can substitute that part in for the y in the other equation. And so it turns out to you get an equation like this. You still have the 2x plus the 5, but now you're replacing y with what y equals. That's the substitution part. Okay? So um, that's the big idea here. So you have to have one of your variables by itself. You have to have an equation where one variable equals something. And then you can use substitution. Now this is just a linear equation in one variable. There's only x's in it, so you can solve that. And then when you're done solving for x, you, you do have to go back and solve for y. But um, that will show you how to do that. So we're going to get ordered pairs for the solution. Okay. So here's a system of equations, and it says solve the system by substitution. So I'm going to take that top equation, um, let's see, I'll write it in green. So negative 2x plus y equals negative 11. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that negative 2x to the other side. It's going to become positive, so it'll be 2x minus 11. So you could also think of it as putting it in slope-intercept form. So you have y equals, so we did that. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, that expression that equals y, we're going to put it in right there. And so I'm going to rewrite that bottom equation, and we'll do that in black. So x plus 3 times, now you have to put the parentheses in because we have to multiply all of y, which is 2x minus 11 equals 9. So it's kind of visual, hopefully you can see it, but I'm taking this expression and I'm putting it in that spot right there for y. Okay? Now, like I said, that's a linear equation, so we're going to solve it. x plus 6x minus 33, I'm doing this distributing here, equals 9. And so I have 7x, um, I'm simplifying, Minus 33 equals 9. I'm going to add the 33 to both sides. And this is the solving a linear equation like we know and love. 7x equals 42. And we're going to divide by 7. And we get x equals 6. Okay, so that makes us feel good. It turned out to be an integer. They don't always, but uh, this time it did. And so we're like, oh, good, we found x. The problem is you're not done. <laughs> you still have to find y. But it's going to be okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take that value that we just got for 6. And we're actually going to substitute again into that equation we used for y. And so we had y equals 2x. But now we're going to take out x and put in the value because we know x is 6. This is a very colorful problem. Okay. And so, and then you have to make sure you finish writing the equation there. And now that's just a little bit of math to do. So y equals 12 minus 11, or y equals 1. Okay, so we're, what it means is if x equals 6 and y equals 1, that satisfies both the top equation, you could check it, and it satisfies the bottom equation, and you could check that as well. And I just checked them in my head, and yeah, it works. Now, how do you write the answer? We like the answer written as an ordered pair usually, and so the answer is x comma y, or 6 comma 1. So remember if you were graphing, like we did in the previous video, you would graph those two lines and they would actually intersect at 6 comma 1. But again, you know, sometimes our ruler's off a little bit, it's hard to get an accurate reading on those graphs. And so substitution takes, it's, it's more accurate for us.
Okay, so there's one example, and now we have another example. Okay, so in the top equation, you'll notice that it's not going to be very convenient to get y by itself. You'd have to divide by 4, and then that's going to be a mess. Um, and same thing in the bottom equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that top equation, though, and I'm going to see the, see the x right there. I'm going to get that x by itself. So when you're doing the substitution, you just have to have one of the variables by itself. So you want to look for a variable that has a coefficient of 1, or even negative 1 is not too bad. Um, and that will probably make it easier. So I'm going to put that, it doesn't always happen, but I'm going to put the negative 4y on the other side. So I get x equals 4y minus 4. So this time I've gotten x by itself. That's okay. And I'm going to take that 4y minus 4, and I'm going to substitute it in right here for x, because that's what x equals. And so I get the equation negative 3, Parenthesis, make sure you put those parentheses in because that'll make a big difference. And then I put what x is being represented by, 4y minus 4, plus the other 4y. So remember, you have to continue writing this down, equals 0. That's an equation now. It's in terms of y, and we can solve it. I'm going to distribute negative 12y plus 12 plus 4y equals 0. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so what do I get? I get negative 8y plus 12 equals 0. Well, I'm going to put the 12 on the other side. 12, negative 8y equals negative 12. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8. And then get y equals... Now, it's a fraction. You have a negative divided by a negative, so it's going to be positive. 4 goes into both of those, so I'll say 3 over 2. It is a fraction. Um, not everything turns out to be an integer. Uh, and 3 over 2, that's not a bad fraction. Okay, now we found y, but we still have to find x. So we're going to take that value for y, and we're going to plug it in right there. And so, again, this is substituting again. x equals 4 times 3 over 2 minus 4. And so I get x equals 2 goes into 4 twice. So I get 6 minus 4, or x equals 2. So it looks like I'm getting the ordered pair, and we always put our ordered pairs as x comma y. So it looks like I'm getting the solution to be 2 comma 3 over 2. And that fraction would be hard to read off the graph. So, you know, how do you know it's not 4 fifths or something like that? Well, be more than that, but... Anyway, they, that's why we have substitution. It's just more accurate. Now, you can check these, and I want to show that. It's going to make this video a little bit longer, but I want to show you how to check those. So in the top equation, if I look at the originals right here, I have x minus 4y equals negative 4. And I'm just going to check and see if it's really true, if my answer works. So I put in the values for x and y, and I'm going to see if it works. 2 minus, now 2 goes into 4 2 times, so I get 2 times 3 is 6. So does 2 minus 6 equal negative 4? It does. So happy face that it works for that one. Okay, let's try the other equation. So this one down here, negative 3x plus 4y equals 0. And let's make sure it works there. Because remember, your solution has to work in all the equations in the system. Negative 3 times 2 plus 4 times 3 over 2. And does that equal 0? Well, 2 goes into 4 2 times still. So we get negative 6 plus 6 equals 0. Yeah, that works also. Okay, so we're just checking. This is just the check over here. And it all checks out. Okay. Now you don't have to check them, but it's a nice idea too.